<laughs> bow, 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 bow. Um, all right. Um, let's see what's in my backpack. Yes, it's a game full of guys. <laughs> Ouch! Watch my boob. You know what? I take out a piece of chalk since my since my thieves tool could set that damn thing off. I'm gonna take out one of my pieces of chalk and I'm gonna drop it on that tile. All right. Fun, all right. It shatters. So your piece of chalk is now useless, but nothing happens. On the nothing happens when the when it touches it. Nope. Nope. But you lose the piece of chalk because it shattered on the floor. It. Well, that's okay. I got twenty pieces of chalk. All right. Um, they still got the rope tied around me. Um, I ask they them. Do. They do. They do. You know what? I tell uh, I tell Grimly to throw Grimly. Me one of the bones in this area right here where the um, kind of isn't stairs but looks like stairs. <coughs> okay. Here you go. So, all right. So now I got um, one of the bones. I'm going to climb back on the statue and I'm going to drop the bone on that thing since my chalk didn't do anything. Nothing happens. Alright, I kind of yell, look, kind of lean back and say, Alright, um, <sighs> keep that rope really tight because I'm going to step down on this tile. Well, okay. I'm going to step on the tile. Nothing happens. Okay. You're safe. I pick up the bone and I toss it here. Nothing happens. Okay. I take another piece of chalk and I drop it on that one. Not a nothing. Nothing. Okay. Now what I want to do. Let's look at this wall on both sides and see if there's any sort of a switch or anything. Nope. You feel pretty safe. Uh, you feel pretty confident you should probably run to the other side of the... Well, actually, you could probably even walk to the door pretty safely. Safely. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk across there. All right, there you go. Now, you know the tile in front of you... Is fiery. Is pretty fiery, yeah. It's It's got a... Uh, it's quite pungent. Okay, but the three that are in front of the door are fine. Correct. It's just that one tile between you and that other tile that uh, has the the fire source into it. Okay, well, while I'm here, I want to check this door in front of him. Okay. You don't sense any traps on it, and it is unlocked. Okay. Um, I want to, I want to try to go into like stealth mode, since this is kind of a dimly lit room, mm -hmm. because I want to see if like that other door, I can um, open it up and see if there's anything on the other side. But first, I want to listen. Okay, you listen. You do not hear anything, and you open the door. Okay. I want to peek in a little bit. All right. When you peek in, uh, you notice that there are many thick webs that are hanging from the corners and the ceilings, well, in the ceiling of this room. Uh, there are dozens of tiny spiders crawling about on the webs, uh, but you notice that they're too small to be the source of the, the actual entire room that is uh, covered with webs all the walls and everything and as you actually you peer in uh, and you peek around the corner you can actually see the corpse uh, what appears to be a, a kobold all right go stand there. David hold your step actually David you need to give me a a reflex saving throw <laughs> please oh <my> God. <laughs> this is awesome David give me a reflex saving throw bud Roll to ten. All that hard work. 
Uh, you are able to. Which way are you? Which way are you uh, ducking and cover? I'll go uh, backwards. Okay. Uh, you're going to take five damage. You made your your reflex saving throw, but you do take five damage as you step on the tile. You hear a click, and you feel a sudden burst of <laughs> flame shoot up from the floor, oh, and brother. you you fall yeah. backwards. And you're able to only take half damage, so right. you do take five. Flex, get out of the way. Did I'm you happen to check this square right here? Flex, uh, get out of the way so <laughs> I can get a running <laughs> jump. So great, guys. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fire. I'm going to jump over the one that caught flame. You can go. You can come. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to check this room just a hair more. But from where y'all are to me. It's just that square. Just the one square that that Dave just stepped on. So, uh, yeah. One second. Dave. Yeah. Dave, I got athletics. Yeah. That's a, that's a feat. I believe uh, that is a. Only got negative one acrobatics. Let's see. That's a plus two bonus. I think it's so I can it use is uh, you I for an alley oop is. over that uh, line, over that square. <laughs> Absolutely, I will definitely let you do an acrobatics yeah. check uh, over that tile. Wait a second before you run to my butt. And let's okay. let's one thing at a time. Almond, what are you doing? Quickly. I, all I want to do is, as of right where I'm standing, I can only see about half of this room, mm -hmm. and since I'm still all stealth and it looks really That's dark. That's why I'm coming. I just want to no, I peek around the, the corner. corner. Yeah, I just want to just a little bit more. You see absolutely nothing but tons of webs. Okay. Now, so what I want to do, since that's what I see, is I want to basically step right out on this safe tile and tell them we can come forward. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm going to jump over that tile, so get out of the way. I am. I just wanted to make. I didn't. You know, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew what what's over here. This is gonna be good. All right, Gimli, give me an acrobatics check, my little dwarf and stubby legged friend. So I got a minus two on um, uh -huh. to hit, but I have a plus four on my athletics. Well, the, oh, well, the, hey, the pl I minus two to hit, that's only for combat, man. Oh, that's yeah. only for combat. Oh, yeah, I've still got a 50-foot rope attached to me. I can, when he go if he holds the rope, when he gets airborne, I can kind of <laughs> give him a tug, huh? Would that give him a bonus? Sure, I'll, get, I'll give you a plus one bonus on that for tugging him. And then I'll just give a little tug to each person as I collect my 50-foot rope. <laughs> sure, that sounds good. Well... Yeah, well you're gonna need to. Uh, what do you mean? Is it is it tied to Gimli or what? It's tied to me still. Well, I know it's why? tied to you, but I mean, are you gonna oh, tie Gimli. it? They're holding it. They Gimli, why don't you tie it around yourself, and we can uh, use the rope, tie it up tight, so we can shimmy across. Oh, there's nothing really to tie it to. I mean, it's not. It's only what a, a six foot square. He's only four foot tall. Your back will be hitting the ground. Uh, <laughs> four foot seven. <laughs> that, that'd be like I'm you, Blix. I'm, I'm just gonna give it a tug and kind of help his trajectory. Yeah, that's cool. I'll give you a plus one on your athletics for that, Gimli. If he holds on to it. So yeah, give me it. Give me I it. A, it. I can make it. Give me an acrobatics oh, check. Jump it. Let's give me an it. acrobatics check. Let's do it. Please roll a one. Ah, oh, he made it! Yeah, you're able to jump across again. But as you as you as you jump across, okay, hold right there, guys. As you jump across, uh, you start to kind of fall backwards, and Almond grabs your beard, and he has to pull you by the beard to get your balance get your back balance. for you. Not the Not beard! The beard! Not the beard! <laughs> <laughs> As I'm holding onto the beard and he's he's rocked back on his heels, kind of lean forward. I said, "Do you want me to let you?" Uh, they are new, uh, Star. I'm okay. I'm okay. They're, I'm I'm new to Pathfinder as well, so this we're playing Pathfinder tonight. Beginner box set. All right. 
so as you move into the room, uh, you you sense that you feel a very large presence behind you, Amon, that uh, appears out of the the webs. Do I see him? You sure do. I'm going to attack him. Well, you can hold on. You guys were surprised, so you guys are n not going to get your dex bonus, so that means that you guys are flat-footed. That is a uh, gimmick that Pathfinder has, and if you are surprised, then you are considered flat-footed. And flat-footed means... Well, not a dwarf. I'm just saying that the rule states that you are, even though you are a dwarf, it doesn't affect you. It still affects everyone else. So. And what what flat foot it is, you can look on your character sheet, and you can see that uh, there is a uh, a flat footed card in the combat. When you scroll down, uh, flat footed is right on the second line of rules. Click on that, and it says you lose your dex mod. So basically, uh, you lose your your dex mod. So if you're in heavy armor, you're not going to have a dex mod anyway. So it's not going to matter for being flat-footed. But in your case, I believe you're in like leather armor, Amon. So you're going to lose your dex bonus. But you have your, you know, you have your armor bonus anyway. I think uh, that that wolf put on you. So you know, you still have yes, your well. buff icon there. So all right, so. I let you two go. Uh, the spider surprised you, so uh, the spider will get initiative this round. Wolf, what are you going to do? Do I have a clean shot at it? At the the spider? You you yeah. really don't have full uh, visual... I guess you, you're yeah. you're not your your vision isn't really you can't see the spider that well because of all the webs. So you you can see it. You can definitely see it a little bit, but I mean it's not, you know, full blown. I look at uh, them and give them a a look like tell them that they need to get here quick. Hurry and jump, kind of okay. look. I make a running jump too. Okay. Tile there. All right, give me an acrobatics check. And I'm gonna. Yeah. I've I've got a low a low back. DC number. I'm gonna grab a hold of his hair. Grab a hold of his hair, huh? See, this thing must be broken. All I've been rolling is sevens. <laughs> the hell. Uh, that sucks. It's just bad RNG for you. So, uh, you are in the other tile. You barely made it across. Gimli had to actually pull your staff as your. I know that sounded uh, actually sounded pretty dirty, but he he pulled your staff. Gimli, quit moving. Blix, what are you doing? I'll probably have to run across and jump using an acrobatics check. Okay, so. Whoa, hang on! I'm still on the tile. Yeah, uh, are you? Were you going to move to this tile here? Yeah, it was. Okay. So now, Dave, you can you can jump across this tile, which is the infected tile. And give me a a check. I've only got a it's at I got a, one. Nah, it's okay, you'll be fine. Just don't roll I'm a one. Oh, oh! Bum, bum, ba, bum, bum. I need to get that prices right symbol out. Give me another. <laughs> give me a reflex check. Another reflex check, Dave. Oh my goodness! All right, you tumble forward, uh, and you take three damage. You take three more fire damage as the as the tile erupts in flames. <laughs> kind of singes your cloak a little bit. Malavel, what are you doing, Machiavelli? I'm probably just going to have to move right up to here until I can... Uh, uh, there's a clear path for me to jump across that tile. Yeah, there's a traffic Where jam right now. Is what? that tile safe? 
that tile is safe yes it, it is safe uh i don't think you would know that though because you weren't watching almond oh i would have asked <laughs> You, you wouldn't have known, but we'll say you took a chance anyway. You moved and nothing happened. So, yeah. But but next time, just uh, just say if you want to move there. Just just uh, say you're gonna move. Oh, brother! And I'll let you know if uh, if it's a good or bad move. That's awesome. Malaville. Malaville. Well, since there's an open spot there, I'll go ahead and jump across. I'm getting ready to pull him. All right. Just don't roll a one, two, or three, or four, or something like that. This he'll be fine because he's got like a plus eight anyway. I think in acrobatics. Bum bum ba bum. Yeah, you make it across. You're in the uh, tile right there. There you go. All right, so. The spider uh, has gotten initiative on you. So, Amon, uh, you are going to be attacked. Uh, what is your your armor class with no dex modifier? Because you're you're basically you're flat footed. So, your flat footed armor class. What is your flat footed armor class? My base is AC. My armor is two minus my dex would be. I have 15, my dex is a plus 3, so I'm at 12. Oh, okay. Plus 4 for the mage armor. Oh, that's right. Don't forget the mage armor. You guys so can guys always can remind each other of that, so, yeah. And remind me of something if I don't add something in. You guys need to remind me as well, because I, I can't remember every single, every little thing, so. Alright, I'm going to roll to hit for you. Uh, let's see. Plus sixteen. Plus thirty-five to hit. Wait, what? what? Just kidding. Uh, it is a sixteen versus armor class. Uh, I'm at sixteen. All right, you are hit. Uh, you take a total of three damage. And. You are poisoned. So, you feel a uh, a very painful uh, sting as the the spider uh, bites into your arm. So, what I need you to do is make a fortitude saving throw. So, one d twenty plus your fortitude, and I have a DC number. And if you roll higher, you'll be fine. If you fail it, you'll die. I'm just kidding. I love to mess with these guys. It's it's great. Just one thing, you guys are you guys are nailing your saving throws. That's that's really good. You basically you you feel like a a sharp sting or something like a like a burn, but nothing happens, Almond. You are safe, sir. Okay, so can I make a a move or what's next? Since he attacked me. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What we're gonna do is roll initiative now. So surprise, the surprise round is over. So make sure you target your token and roll initiative. Hmm, only a three modifier. My initiative is 18. I wonder why it's not thrown in the tracker. Did you modify that macro or anything? No, I added my own macro. Yeah. I think I... Maybe I did modify it, I didn't know. Yeah, I think you did, because it is not working. Ah, so that's the problem. My bad. Yeah, I modified mine, too. If you do it again, I will kill you next time, Dave. <laughs> All right. So, what what did you do to your macro? I see the variable is still fine. So let's see. The initiative macro is uh. Yeah, I, I, already, I, had the, I already had 
I had the formula in there already for you, man. I mean, it, yeah, it, I'm not hitting your button. I wrote, uh, I wrote like the my own one in the cog. Yeah, yeah uh, hold on. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna change your initiative macro back to what it was. Uh, what this does is, uh, you're. I don't know why you modify it, Dave, but the yeah, you don't. Uh, those macros were set, so. Okay, my, I didn't know. Sorry. What happened to all the macros? Did you just delete the macros? Word all the okay. Never mind. Uh, I see it in here now. Yeah, those macros were already ready to go, guys. So. Uh, all right. Yeah, I think I didn't uh, add. I think it didn't say. Uh, what this does is, you're. I don't know why you modify it. All right. So now go ahead there and. There we go. Target your token and throw it into the tracker. There we go. There, there we go. There you go. All right. So you're working. I didn't out. know what that command, that second command, was doing. Yeah, it throws it into the tracker. It says at tracker. So that's what that's what okay. that means. All right, Almond. Uh, go ahead. Did you target your token or did you change your you change macro your as well? Macro as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I wrote my own little macro thing. All right, I guys. Ended up with All right, guys. Twenty-three. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, don't. Hold on. All right. Now you can do it, and it'll throw it into the tracker now, and then I'll just change the number while it's while it is inside of the the tracker because you have a variable. Uh, you can see. Uh, um, and see the initiative variable under attributes that's your initiative so that's your three so you didn't have to even put 1d20 plus plus three so uh, that's yeah so you're ready to go so go ahead and target your token and and throw it in there all right there you go so initiatives are done you guys don't need to worry about those macros anymore because uh I only use a couple variables, so the initiative is part of the initiative macro, obviously, and then the perception is a macro that I use for you to notice things out of the corner of your eyes and stuff. So, and the hit points is is pretty obvious what that is for as well. So, but yeah, that's the only thing. I mean, but the other one d one d four to one d twenty, all of those macros. Uh, uh, those don't need any kind of modifiers or anything like that, so they're sort of like universals. But I see, yeah, you guys change your macros up. I mean, that's fine. It's just you guys got to maintain those macros. Don't forget to change the variables. So, all right, Eamon, go ahead and go. Okay. Um, What's up, Star? I am definitely jealous of I'm your points. Move a little bit to let other people in the room. So, and I'm still with, I still have my bow and arrow, not my rapier. And then, uh, I'd like to attack. With a crappy roll. <laughs> Let's see. Your crappy roll is a nine, which you definitely miss. I guess you. What did you do? Now you you moved backwards, right? I I went sideways uh, two squares so that I could give them more room to come in. Okay. Well, I'm, you're right here now. I'm gonna let you know this right now. I mean, you guys should have already read this. Now you you should be taking an attack of opportunity because you left. The radius of the actual spider. Well, you left the the area of the spider. And if you're here, here, anywhere, that that spider takes up four squares. Now, any one of these squares that you are around, that is basically you are in its range. And if you leave its range, then you take an attack of opportunity. And there's a card. 
on your sheet that says attack of opportunity very last thing in all the rules that I have halfway down and you can see that uh, an attack of you provoke an attack of opportunity and you know it tells you if you moving if you move out of a threatened square it provokes an attack of opportunity from threatening opponents so and then it tells you there are two common methods of avoiding such an attack so what you want to do is you want to sidestep now that that basically I believe that takes your is it your move action or let me look I believe it's uh or maybe it's your standard action I'm not used to uh, Pathfinder rules yet guys so one second they're calling it a five foot step yeah, that's what it is. You're moving. You would move from. You're you were here, so you're going to move here, which you're going to move anyway. You're still within range of it because of its. You're at an angle to it, so I mean you can you can sidestep five feet, but you're still going to be in range. But you actually wanted to move right here, so that means that you would have taken an opportunity attack because you moved out of the actual range. So. Let's see. Okay, so whatever, uh, whatever you decide is a way to handle it. Oh, it's not what I decide. It's it's the rules. So you see, it is. Uh, I believe it's. It might be a free action. Let me look. Uh, free action. Yeah, five. You'll see here a free action. You can drop an item. Drop prone, which makes makes yourself look dead. Uh, you can do a five foot step, which a five foot step. You can move five feet, one square in any direction. And if you do this, you do not provoke an attack of opportunity. So, if you move, this is sort of like, this just goes with movement. This is just mechanics of movement, Alman. So, if you move, now say, all right, basically, I'm going to shrink this spider down. We're going to do a little lesson here on, on the, just the plain rules. No big deal. Something we need to learn anyway. So, all right, you're within its, its threatening reach. All right, it is a, it's now considered a medium creature. If you move, and if you just say, I, I move over here, all right, you just provoked an attack of opportunity. So he would get a free attack on you. Nothing but just a normal plane attack with modifiers. Now, if you, seeing that, now if you, if you were here, it's the same deal. If you moved out, you were still, you know, within this five foot reach. You move out, you provoke an attack of opportunity. Now, seeing that this dude is huge, well, he's large, and he takes up four squares, same deal goes. So, you know, he's in these four squares, the four lower squares, you're here. You wanted to sidestep, that's fine. You can sidestep for free, that's your free action. And now you can move still. So you moved over here. That's going to provoke an attack of opportunity because you left his, his five foot reach. So. That's Once just you get a, little, a side step, you can't move any other moves. I, I think that's what it is, actually. So I need to. That's how it is in fourth edition. So if you if you if you take your if you slide or if you side step five, then you can't move again. So I'm not sure how it is in Pathfinder. So let me. Is that how it is? You remember reading that about it? Yeah, I'm reading it right now. If okay. you <clears throat> if you don't move, you're if you don't use your move action or your standard action to move, then you can do a side step. Yep. And that's you your, that concludes your movement for that turn. So it's just like fourth edition, basically. You can't move once you once you do that. So very good. That's an easy rule to uh, adapt for Pathfinder. So now we won't have to worry about that again. So we'll say you side stepped. Do you still want to move? I mean, no. Well, you can't move anymore, so no, I can't move you sidestepped. Yeah, the whole intent was just to give them room to get in here and save my ass. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So yeah, you're able to to get another square in here, square of room. So let's see, Wolf, you're up now. Okay, I'm gonna move up next to Gimli. To there. Okay. Now, you uh, just moved into a bunch of spider webs. 
So you are pretty much tangled up. Uh, you're basically going to be immobilized while in these webs. 